thanking the the creator the great mystery god or the one that's known by a thousand names whatever feels comfortable for you to thanks right now for being alive today in this moment and uh being in connection with each other the blessing of being alive the blessing to be in connection uh, we want to expand it to blessing the land we are sitting on right now we're all in different places and there is this beautiful energy below us that is holding us right now and so expanding it to whatever lands you are in acknowledging the presence of something that is alive allowing it to be received so you can feel and hear maybe something coming from there so we thank you the land we thank you all the life forms that are present we thank you for their guidance their wisdom expanding this prayer into the ancestors of this land the ancient caretakers for me here where i am that's the lenape people um and i want to remind myself and maybe it's the case for some of you that i'm sitting on stolen land so i want to acknowledge that in the field and uh ask for permission ask for blessing so we do good work here and we honor in a good way sending my prayer in the directions of the ancestors all the one that came before me and it came before us today so we could be here reminding ourselves that this experience this breath these things that we call life is a ceremony it's sacred and so asking for for guidance and wisdom for you know all the speakers and all the participants uh to be able to connect to that wisdom so my my prayer is always asking creator to uh remind me to to be humble uh so i can hear so i can receive so i'm asking for that blessing for for all of us here and i want to expand the the prayer in the sixth direction the east the west the north and the south below and above the grandmothers and the grandfather spirits that are dwelling in each of those directions to hold us in that container um and so we feel that we are sitting in a circle with them uh not above not below not on the side but in a circle and so asking for the the blessing of the ancient circle these ancient ways of gathering together even if we gather on screen today asking that we experience the blessing to see that way to co-create that way and that the blessing of the circle the blessing of that alchemy of that co-creation uh, be felt uh, during the next 24 hours and be felt in our lives uh, as long as we breathe that we planting seeds today maybe we gathering seeds together and the beautiful garden of uh, souls and hearts and uh yeah feeling immense gratitude and thanks for for this opportunity and for everyone that is present today and that is listening. Let's just take a breath with that. Feel the power of Angel's words. Mm. Thank you, Angel. That was a powerful blessing. I can feel it in my arms, actually. Like, mm -hmm. I can feel that energy just rushing over me. In a moment, I'm going to ask me, ask you about your journey into this kind of space um, as your work as a, a, a breathwork and a, a, a shamanic uh, facilitator um, who has this connection to the non-material realms but i think what i would like to do first is for all the people who haven't had the the great pleasure 
of your company and your presence and knowing your story um, to introduce yourself. When you came on to our first Inspiration Festival, I was lucky enough to really hear your, your story and your journey. Um, and so if you're watching this and you want to know a bit more about that, I'm going to put the link into to this uh, interview that we did. But how would you introduce yourself to, you know, to the world in sort of a couple of minutes? What do you think are the important things that people need to know about you? You know, it's always tricky. I feel those questions. Uh, how <laughs> far or wide we go with this? You know, if you want to define me by what I do, I'm a shamanic practitioner, meaning I work with ancient ways of healing. Breath being one of them, right? Um, but I think I want to introduce myself more in a, in a more traditional way, more ancient ways, saying I'm Angel Deer, that uh, my mother is Innocent Tasso, my father is Jean-Pierre Gautreau, and... I come from a land far away, uh, a small island in the Mediterranean basin that's called Corsica. That's where my ancestors are from. And that's who I am. You know, in traditional way, when we introduce ourselves, we introduce our parents. And uh, I like that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's not much details, right? But uh, that's a way to make it really simple. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. And, you know, that feels so really powerful to me. And maybe what I, when we do these interviews, um, we are here to inspire people around breathwork. And I invite in the people who inspire me. But what really inspires me is hearing their journeys, hearing their stories, and not just the glossy shopfront version of themselves, that the kind of the amazing things that they do, but the challenges, you know, the, 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 the hardships they have that they've had to go through, that the universe has put in front of them in order for them to step into their greatness. Now, your connection to your, your family and your roots and traditions is a really great learning, actually. And I think I would like to honour both your parents. Um, can you just share, share their names again with us and we will take a breath with them? So my mother and uh, first name is Innocence, which is Innocence. quite interesting. And my father is Jean-Pierre. Let's take a breath with Innocence and Jean-Pierre. You know, I love them so much. It's, uh, it's hard for me to mention their name without being quite move and tender uh, always. Uh, just, just so much love. Uh. Oh, thank you, uh, Angel, like for your honouring of your your lineage there. And I'm going to come back to Innocence and Jean Pierre in a second, but just to put you and them in a bit of context, I wonder if you could um, just just introduce yourself in that kind of non tradition modern way, maybe sharing with what you actually do as a shamanic uh, practitioner as well. And then I'm going to go into that inspiring lineage story that you have. Would you be able to do that for me? Sure. Um, so, you know, I, I'm a shamanic practitioner, meaning I work with ancient ways of healing. I've trained with uh, a tradition that is coming from Peru, from uh, the Andes. That's called Andean Cosmovision. So that's the altar or the prayer I carry that I've been studied for over 10 years uh, with my teacher, Miguel. Uh, and I've also sat a lot with um, Native American people, many Lakotas, but other tradition. And so I work mainly based on the teaching of my elders that I learned from. For me, it's really important, you know, there's no work I do that is not constantly evolving and alive. So I'm, I'm a beginner, you know, I'm a student of them. And so what I offer people is really my learning in those, uh, in those ways. I'm also, you know, a Reiki practitioner, a meditation teacher, herbalist. I, you know, I own a retreat center here and we do a lot of permaculture. We have a forest school for children. We have a mushroom farm, greenhouse, women's gardens, chapels, temples, sweat lodge, vision quest. So we have, we have a lot going on here. 
uh, right? But I, I think what's the most important at the end of the day, I think it is for me, you know, it is who we are as human being, right? So all of this experience and this teachings and the things I do, they, they shape me, right? But what shaped me the most are my personal experience, my traumas, those places where, you know, I fell on my knees. And that's what I would like to bring when I introduce myself, but it's very hard to bring that, right? The, price, the places where my heart has cracked, the places that are unresolved, because I think it's very important in this work, at least that's the way I see it, that we show up with those parts. Not what we know and what we have resolved and what we think is truth, but more what's unresolved, right? What is still mm. processing and being able to be uh, authentic, right? I don't want to show up as like, oh, this is who I am. And some people call me a medicine man. And some people call me a shaman and all of this. Sure. Because there's so many projections in those words, right? I like just to show up as, okay, you know, yeah, I've struggled in my life. And I have also a lot of beauty and things I'm grateful for. And uh, yeah, I think the great healers, you know, I think. My teacher always says that, but I really agree with him. He says that that's not the people with the most skills and the most tools and the most experience in the room. That's the person with the most regulated nervous system, with the most regulation in the room. And what that means, it's uh, for me, that's the person that's the most in contact with their pain, with their traumas, with everything that made them and still are able to somehow experience gratitude to somehow feeling the blessing to be alive in this moment so we can be in connection, right? And we might talk more about that, but I love that your title this year is co-creation, right? Mm -hmm. In order to co-create, we need to be connected. We need to be in connection, but we need to be in connection with the self, right? So for me, what I bring to my teaching, and I think that's what I want to be, is that I bring all of my parts, <laughs> <laughs> all of my stuff right and that's what make us human and that's where i think we connect right mm. we don't it connect really from a, from a high chair right we connect when we cry we connect when we we really see each other's and so that's when there is no mass there is no armors barriers right and that's a challenge and i think a great teacher for me that's what, what it is about right that's what i try to embody you know and i fell at it right like everybody uh, but at least that's my my, my prayer <laughs> <laughs> um and that's really beautiful i mean it, it really resonates with everything that we share in breathing space and there's so many directions i want to go in here but you you almost gave us an invitation Marshall. there um you invited us almost just to well, it felt like an invitation to maybe just ask you about some of those cracks, some about those, you know, unresolved traumas, some about some of those wounds, which you carry with you, which is who you are, and which has helped you step up into the leader that you are, the facilitator and the meditation teacher and the leader, but maybe share some of the wounds that you have or some of the challenges that life has thrown into you, where you had to step up, where you had to learn. Does that feel like a, a good question to start. Would you be willing to share something from your story? Yes, about sure. A um, challenge or a wound that you have? Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I was born uh, with a dramatic uh, C-section emergency and separated from my mother at birth, right? Right when I was born. Uh, for a week, I was not uh, with any caretakers. I mean, any parents, right? That's a big one. It's kind of the foundation of my being, right? My first experience of life was uh, quite violent, unsafe, unconnected. Um, you know, and I'm turning 49 uh, in a few weeks, and that's still something I carry, right, that I work on, but still show up in my life. Um, that's a big one for me. Later on in my life, when I was in my, I was a little boy, I was, 11 or 12, I was abused, you know, sexually abused and raped. And that's something I forgot about until I was 43. I had no memory of it. 
defined uh, my path as a healer and as a breath worker in so many, so many ways um, because of the uh, unspoken trauma, uh, un un unconscious trauma, right? That still show up, obviously, in my life. Um, and, you know, I've been living with uh, something that's that's more recent, but in very few people know about it because it's one story I've never shared, but I've been living with uh, chronic pain in, in this for the last year and a half. Um, and um, very uh, strong in the past six weeks. And in fact, this today and the last few days were, were very, very difficult for me. And... Um, you know, it's very humbling, very humbling to, to live with chronic pain in the body to, to a point where, you know, you can't move out of your bed many days and you can't really walk. And uh, when, when you think you, you get it, when you think you have all the plants and the tools and the elders and teachers and ceremonies and, and when nothing works, when you're grounded, right? It's like you're punished <laughs> and there's no no resources available for connection to the outer world. Um, I'm still figuring it out, uh, but I had a very good cry uh, an hour ago, uh, cry a lot and uh, kind of the pain moved. And it's interesting because that pain is supposed to be quite physical because of something in my spine and, and that, but after crying, uh, in fact, since I cried an hour ago, I almost don't have any more pain in my body. And uh, because I'm in that work, right, I'm fascinated by that. I'm like, oh, it's interesting. The pain moves somewhere else. And it's reminding me this powerful connection that I talk a lot about between spirit and mind and bodies. And even when we have physical illnesses, uh, sometimes we have diagnostic put on us, right? Level, this is who you are. You know, this is, this is what you need to heal. And here's the pill or is the treatments, right? But it reminded me really of this, uh, this work I'm, I'm so embedded into, like I, I explore, which is this great mystery. That's how we call it, right? <laughs> the great unknown. Something beyond what I can even see or understand. Something just came into me, made me really release a lot of tears, mm -hmm. sob very deeply and created space. So somehow, you know, I could be there, right? I probably, I would have still been there, but probably not feeling as much lightness in my body. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the mystery of trauma. There's a lot of discussion on trauma. There's a lot of beautiful teachers, amazing tools uh, in the breathwork field, in other type of field. But I think... Sometimes it's missing that component, which is something that we don't see, that we don't know, that we can call, but doesn't always come if we call it. And that's just going to come in the right moment, in the right way, in such magical way. And, and I require so much patience and trust, especially, you know, when it's difficult or very difficult. Um, but that's the foundation of this work, right? It's very, we pray a lot to the spider medicine because spider weaves, you know, like you are mm -hmm. a weaver, Benedict. I, I don't know if you know that. You have a lot of spider energy, right? <laughs> you can weave this beautiful web, right? Of teachers, of people. So you, you tap a lot into that medicine. So I know she's guiding you, right? And we always say the web is perfect. The spider, she knows how to make such a beautiful web. And she also reminds us that everything is co connected. Everything is co-created, right? There's nothing really separated there. But one of the archetype, one of the quality that spider carries is uh, faith, right? She built a web and she just sat there. She just know. She just knows spirit is going to come, right? Give us some insight, some food. Some... She doesn't, after three hours or a day, oh, you know what? It doesn't work here. I'm going to move my web somewhere else, right? She's just <laughs> in there. So she's a great teacher of surrender, of faith, mm -hmm. and she's patient, which is something I don't have much. So, uh... <laughs> so anyway, uh, I don't know how patient you are, but it's one of her quality. Uh, 
yeah and, and with trauma with healing you know i think uh when you ask me about my stuff one day i think and i'll finish by that like years ago it came very clear into a ceremony that in order to heal i needed to accept that i might never heal that i needed to make space for the non-healing to happen to be able to create space so am i going to live with this if that doesn't heal instead of having an idea of my life being better in a month or in a year or in five years when this is going to be healed, right? So I don't live in the meantime. I'm not going to live my life because this is horrible. This is pain. I hate them. This happened to me. And until I this is gone, I'm not going to feel okay. No, 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 no. What about if we agree that none of that is going to go away? I'm going to take it with me at my last breath. Can I still expand this life as a blessing how am i going to show up can i still love myself others can i still be kind to myself you know and it's it's a journey right it's, it's not a, a given it's not like you know we master it but mm -hmm. i like to see healing that way i like to see healing as something that basically is a bit different, that our intention when we go to breath work or ceremonies or Peru or yoga, that I'm going because I'm alive and I have this opportunity to experience a beautiful day, right? But not, I'm not going because I want to get rid of something. If that happened, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Whatever works for you, right? But if it doesn't, can I, can I still live my life? Not as a mm. destination, but as really as this journey, right? And and still feel a good human, you know, like alive. I, like, like, I'm, we're just all going to take a breath here because you gave us a huge download then. And there's so many parts in there that, that have just like sparked things in me. But first of all, just to honor all of that wisdom that you shared with us and your journey, let's just take a breath. And we'll take another breath with just the wounding that you suffered at birth. And the sexual trauma that was visited upon you when you were young. I wish to honor and acknowledge that. And the chronic pain that you are, that you are with now, that you are still showing up for with us right now. And the grace that you still join us with, Angel. You said some words that have just hit me like a hammer blow. In order for healing to take place, I have to accept that healing may not take place. And I have to surrender to that. And what a profound, profound wisdom that is. In order for healing to take place, I have to accept that it may not take place. And to be totally okay with that. Easy said, not easy done, I am sure. Yeah. It's I love your... Right? That grip that we put on our a stuff. Grip. We grip and we have to let go of that grip. I love your imagery of the spider energy who is with us uh, creating our webs and who is patient. Um, you know, if you are unable to get out of bed, I'm sure there is going to be some spider energy hovering around you. We may not always want to learn that. Uh, we may not have a choice. However, sometimes the universe puts things in our place that we have to learn. Um, I think I would like to ask you, um, not about breath work, actually, I know this is a festival about breath work and to spread the, the joy and the enlightenment about breath work, but you have so many other aspects to your, to your wisdom and your lineage that I, I want to just explore a little bit. Um, let's talk about the ceremonial aspects of your work and what that can bring um, into, I mean, we're, we're using the word healing here or moving on, but we know that's a, not the correct word, but to, to connect with us to connect with each other, to co-create with each other. So maybe could you just share with you your vision of how ceremony binds us all together, connects us 
and the power that we find in there. Is that something that you feel hmm. you could talk about? Sure. Um, no, I, I, I feel it's, it's a lot about creating meaning, right? We, we are, we're uh, an animal that loves stories, that loves dreams that loves meanings right we we need it's a it's a sphere that we have you know with our frontal cortex imaginations possibilities and the ceremonial space the rituals they create meanings they create layers of meanings right they 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 expand the container of just me and my body and my emotions and my mind maybe my spirit into something bigger that is shared right something that is beyond me and that we all share together so i think i always see the ceremonial space as first that let's give some let's expand the web right let's let's weave something slightly bigger around us we can find more space inside us right we can detach a little bit about who we think we are into maybe tapping into maybe what we are something that is really not physical only but there's also the context of and it's not, some people say, well, we can believe in that or not, right? The, the spiritual context, the, the idea that there is some invisible forces, uh, that some of them are benevolent, that they are here to help. And that the ceremonial space called them, right? So very often, you know, when we set up an altar, which is a piece of cloth, really, on the ground with some sacred items and we pray into it right we put our intention maybe uh, we put a photo of our grandfather we put you know whatever it is that feels our heart is opening the way it is described in my tradition they say that on the other side of the altar right on the other side spirit is looking and the altar is a window or a door and they sing who is there what they calling and then they're calling other spirits. Hey, they're calling the fire. Fire, come here, right? They're calling um, Archangel Michael. They're calling whatever, right? And so they come at that door, right? And they show up, right? They show up for us. So the ceremony, you know, be, those tools they have been refined over thousands of years. You know, the Andean cosmology tradition is more than 15,000 years old. So that specific altar, for me, is a, the oldest piece of technology that we have in the world, right? Way more advanced than an airplane or a rocket to go to the moon, right? <laughs> it, has, it has evolved, not randomly, not by just believing something, but by experience that when we do that, this happened. When we call it in that way and we touch the fire that way and we put the log a certain way and we feed the fire from that place and we orient it in that direction, that somehow healing comes through because grandfather fire is happy that's what we say he's happy because he's seen right uh so the ceremonial context is that right is is tapping first into the unknown unseen uh we don't need to see for them to exist we don't need to know spirits for them to exist they're always there right so it, it's not a belief system it's it's irrelevant and we bring tools that are designed to open those doors So we rely on the, the non-visual, right? Beyond the mind, beyond the conscious, which is so much what breath is about, right? Tapping into the unconscious, tapping into this closed room in our bodies. How do we call something that we've never seen before, that we've never opened before, if we don't have tools, right? And here are some people that, are telling us when you do that, that opened that door. When you do this, it opened that other door, right? And we might laugh at it, right? Depending on where we're coming from, if we're very much in our head or, you know. But one day we experience it, right? What came through me uh, an hour and a half ago? I don't know, right? But something did. 
God knows, last two weeks, nothing came through. Not one minute of the every day passed so slow. I don't know. I called a friend. My dear old friend of mine is a pastor. He's 80 years old. I was telling him about it. He said, I'm going to pray for you now, brother. It was like 10 minutes before it happened. Is it his prayer? Is it my prayer? Who knows, right? But the ceremonial context, right, is that. Once we start seeing that we are a prayer, like the way we behave, the way we talk to ourselves, the way we show up in life, it's a prayer, right? We are an, a physical prayer, a manifestation. In fact, you are and I am the prayer of my parents, right? Somehow, doesn't matter what they believe in, they prayed one day for something to come and here we are. They manifested a prayer, right? It was just in their head. It was just an ID. It was maybe just love. And that prayer manifested a human being. Crazy, right? When you think of it. So it's potent. It's alive, right? It's happening. So we can call that. And I think it's very important that we do that in our, in our space. Because if not, we're going to have to carry the whole room alone on our shoulders, right? Or the whole world pain. And I think it's impossible. I think we won't, we won't be able to do it if we don't bring something bigger, wider. Thank you. What a beautiful answer. I love the idea as an altar, as a window, as a window into something bigger than ourselves, um, to where things can, we can connect. But let's, let's bring in breath here, Angel. How does our breath weave through this ceremonial space that we move in? How does our breath create, if you like? How does it to bind us all together and how does it make things happen can you bring breath into your um into your into your vision and what part that plays for us so i'm sure there's going to be amazing speaker talking about the biology and the physiology and uh all the research on the breath and it's all true by the way it's, it's all true but i'm going to talk about this tradition a 15,000 year old story that talk about the wind, the breath, and what it is. And they say that this breath, this wind, sit in the north, north direction. That's, that's here on my, on my right. And they say the direction of the north is connected, you know, to the season of the winter, right? It's when the trees, they, they're going down, right? They're not growing leaves and branches, they're growing roots, right? So it's an inward descent so the north is very much connected to our inner child to our inner parts to our ancestors our family systems and then you can go up the branch of ancestors right all the way to the trees huh? because they were here before us right and then you can go even before life on earth right so they say that the wind that's what it does it goes in that direction and it carries the prayer of that direction. And they also say that the, the wind, so our breath, carry one prayer only. That's called the prayer of unity. Or the unity prayer. So, sorry for the words, but the unity prayer is a mindfuck. And that's... <laughs> That's the idea of it, because in order to experience it, we need to go beyond the mind, which is interesting, right? Because that's what breathwork does, right? It bypass the thinking mind. But that's what they were saying 15,000 years ago, right? They knew that. And they say that when we breathe or when we pray with the wind, when we experience the, that invisible thing, that is the, the air, the wind, that we receive that prayer of unity that tells us that there is no others. There is no others. That's an illusion. And I know that can be very triggering for many people. And that teaching can be a little bit tricky, right? There is no others. But it also say in the same phrase, in the same prayer, in the same sentence, life is not about me, it's about the others. That's why I said it's a mindfuck, right? Because it says two things that are completely opposite. And the idea of it is to dissolve the ego. Because every light, 
Every prayers that we bring in that tradition brings a shadow, right? You turn on a candle, there's a shadow immediately, right? And the shadow of the wind, the shadow of that prayer of unity is the ego. That's what they say. It's the mind, the ego. That's what's, that's what's in the way to experience that separation here. I need my mind. Without it, there's no more. And the goal of it, and I guess when we're breathing, what are we doing? We're dissolving that sense of self. We're dissolving the barriers that we have built inside, right? Something might show up, an image, an emotion that has been so protected. In my case, you know, we're talking something that was invisible to me for like 25 years, right? Uh, and here I was in that prayer that my elders say, yeah, that's what the wind is. That's what it does, right? So for me, that's what the breath is. The breath is this bridge. That's another way to look at it. It's a bridge, conscious, unconscious, visible, invisible, present, past, me, others. In fact, when you go really deep in that prayer, in that work, you know, I've been working on that door, that north door for many years now. There are very clear moments. I'm talking in a normal state of consciousness, right? I'm talking uh, not in plant medicine ceremony, not in breath work, where you can feel someone's body. I can feel your sadness. I can feel your anxiety. I can even feel your physical pain. I know exactly where it is in your body. That's how I do my work. When I do one-on-one -on -one shamanic session with clients, I just sit there, I breathe, I look at them. I call that prayer, and at some point, it fires in my body. Your pain is my pain, right? So maybe they are right. Maybe there's just one body. And in fact, if you expand it more to the body of the earth, imagine the amount of trauma, not just in our collective, right, in our communities, in our countries, but if you tap into the body of the earth, imagine what it means to feel that right, to receive that. And I think that's one of the many reasons we are so dysregulated. I think it's not just our human traumas that we are feeling, but I think we are feeling into the pain of the land, of the animals, of the trees, of the rivers. There's so much pain, right? Joanna Macy that I love, you know, she's this Buddhist teacher. She's like 85. She said, you know, if you don't cry every morning when you wake up, you're probably not connected to something outside of you. She said, it's very healthy and we should cry every morning. And he said, that's a good sign. She said, if you cry every day, bless you, bless you, because you are in connection. You are in connection, All right? You know, and, but in our society, if you cry every day, what are I going to tell you, right? You're weak. You should know better. Men don't cry. <laughs> you know, stuff like that, right? And maybe that's what I cried an hour ago. I don't know. You know, I don't know what I cried. I was just so much of it, but that was no image, right? Who knows? It doesn't really matter. It moved my waters. <laughs> I felt better. Uh... Um, I don't know if I answered this, your question, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a great job. If you didn't answer my question, you answered a really important question. I'm not sure what it was, but I know that it was important. Um, let's just have a breath with that because there's some really powerful things that you said here. Breath is, uh, breath is our bridge to so many things. Mm. That really hit me. And we are all one and we are all separate as well. Yeah. And you're right, definitely a mind fuck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the whole concept uh, of healing, you know, is a mind fuck. We, we want to heal, but we don't want to be heartbroken. Mm. How do we do that? It's impossible. We have, we are going to be heartbroken if we feel all of that. We are going to feel tremendous turmoil. Maybe that's healing right 
keeping it together might not be healing. I don't know, you know, the more I age, the more I really challenge those views that we have about what it means to be a, a human that's in that's healthy. What, what does it mean to be healthy in a society that's sick? <laughs> well, that is a good question. Yeah. Okay, we've got about 15 minutes left, um, Angel, uh, for our conversation. Uh, and I've got um, I've got a question that I want to finish off with, but I'm I'm feeling here rather than just us talking, I'm wondering if there is a, a, a practice that you might like to lead us in. Now that might be another prayer, it might be a breath work, it might be it might even be another download of wisdom that you would like to share with us. But is there something that you would like to lead the the people who are in this room now and the people who might be watching this on recording later? to connect us with all of the wisdom that you have shared with us today. I'm going to share a practice, I guess, that uh, helps me a lot. Um, especially because um, I have a very hard time doing it. <laughs> it's very simple. But uh, yeah, um, warning sign, impossible to do. Um, but it is that when we are dysregulated, right? When something is really heavy on our hearts. And like I said, I think there's a lot. But then maybe there's something in your personal life. Maybe there's something sitting in your body, in your family. Or maybe you watch TV an hour ago, you watch the news and you just want to cry, right? You just feel like this is just too much um what we do is we we tighten right we close our hearts that's survival we have to because if not we're going to be taken by that tsunami wave and we might not come back from it right that's what we think sometimes when if I tap in my grief sometime, I see just that the ocean is so big of unprocessed grief that if I really open that box, I really don't know if I'll be able to function. And I'm very afraid of that, right? Because I'm a teacher, right? I'm a healer, so I'm supposed to get it together, right? My biggest advice is when we're going through something that is very difficult and very painful is to try to soften. To try to soften. It's very simple. Something tell you, someone tell you something and you're hurt. And, you know, can you soften in that moment and see what happens? Oh, you know. I've been, I was trying to, to practice that this past few days, you know, is my, my pain. It's so hard. How do I soften when my body is just screaming, right? Or when I'm really angry. But it's to call that, at least to call it, to pray, right? I don't know how you call things in your life. Maybe you write about it. So you, you, you bring that. And that... As that way of softening, the way I'm talking about it, is very connected to being more kind to ourselves, to what's going on. It's very connected to kindness. So can I be in that moment and I'm experiencing something really that I qualify as bad, right? I'm angry or not normal or not fine can i can i in the same breath soften and love myself not romantic movie love that's bullshit real love unconditional love like like love when i don't know if you have a child when you look at your child right on the way something like no matter what it does, right? Even if you trigger the hell out of you, you, you know, you might want to swim by the window, but you're not going to do it because there's that love, right? <laughs> so can we do that with the, when we experience something that is so intense that we feel it is impossible to love that person? 
that person being you, right? Or it could be someone else, maybe in that moment. Can I call for love in that moment? Like, and maybe it's like 1% of your resources can be addressed to that, right? 99% is going to be taken by the pain. But maybe if you ask me, I believe that's where grace comes from. There's this moment of surrendering into something that is just love. That's what all the seekers are talking about, all the spiritual teaching. They say that's what it is. That's all what it is there behind. They all say that in Peru, in the Amazon, in Buddhism, in Hinduism. So that's where we're going, right? That's where we're coming from. That's where we're going. And in the meantime, what we do, we search for it, but we refuse to allow it because this is so scary. In fact, I think we're really scared of that kind of love. We're really scared to do that. I think it's more scary than keeping our guards up, than tightening. But that's the challenge, right? That's where we are live. I think once we can master that, I think we stop breathing. We, we call back. Someone is calling us back. Okay, you got it. <laughs> Next assignment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that feels very profound, Marshall. If you can, soften. When you're experiencing pain or challenges, if there isn't just a part of you that can open up to kindness and love, then that is the lesson to be learned. Can I Do you love have any tips? Right now, right? Can I love that pain that I'm feeling? Can I love my body in that moment? How do you do that, Marshall? How yeah. can you, how do you do that? I don't know. I don't know. You have to soften so much. You have to become so tender. And that's why, you know, I said earlier about the, the idea of letting go of this idea that it needs to change. You know, I really have to sit with that the past few months. What if it doesn't get better? What if it doesn't? I mean, there's, you know, two possibilities, right? I, I take my life away, right? I don't want to live in that body. And many people do that when the pain is unbearable, right? Or I learn to live with it. I learn to make a good life out of it, right? And most people, sadly, because they don't have tools, they don't have elders, they don't have ceremonies, they don't have breath work, they don't have you. They take something, right? Drugs, alcohol, painkillers, right? We, we we kill the pain, right? That's not kind, right? But sometimes it's the only way to survive. All right, but can I do that with just my resources, my breath, just closing my eyes, being with it and not trying to change it, just to be with it? Like, it's my master right now. This is my true teacher, that pain, I can tell you that. All right? Yeah. Yeah. But it humbles me makes me so compassionate. I finally understand people that live with pain in their body, what that mean, what that truly mean, right? I never really understood it because I never experienced it, right? We never, we can't understand how someone walking in your shoes, right? So that opens a whole door, right, of connection with plenty of people that are living with that. Mm -hmm. And I come with no solution, right? I don't come with, I'm going to fix you or here's the pill or you should breathe an hour or you should do that. No, I come with like, we're going to be in this together. We're going to work that together and we're still going to connect and we're still going to love each other and we're still going to care. And that's what we're going to nurture. And we're going to pray and we're going to do a lot of things, right? But you're not broken. You know, I really truly believe that the answer is in me already for that pain. I truly believe that. That something hasn't, it's not seen yet. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's humbling. <laughs> um, really humbling. Yeah, it is, right? But everybody carry their cross, as we say, right? And, <laughs> you know, there might be people listening that lost a child. There might be people that, you know, some people carry in tremendous amount of grief and pain and 
that we know nothing about. We don't know what it takes for them to even wake up or make their bed or clean the dishes, right? That day. Maybe that's for them, it's like everything if they can do that that day. That's what I'm seeing. That's the teacher, right? Now I'm looking at it. Okay, well, at least teach me something. Let me understand, right? And I feel like when we do that, somehow it, it is. It screams less at us, right? It doesn't need to scream to be heard. It's soften. The relationship change, right? The person is still the same on the other side. My pain is still the same, right? But my relationship with it is changing. So we are changing together. So my yeah. pain is going to change, right? Right? It's like if I see you every day, you know, Ben, if we, if we were to hang out once a week, our, I'm going to change you, you're going to change me, right? We are going to change in that process of co-creation. Mm. Not just It's not one plus one equal two or three, it's one plus one equal a thousand, right? There's so many things that are going to come out of that interaction, right? And I'll never be able to get you out of my life. Even if I say I never want to see you again, you'll always be there inside of me, hunting me, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like what, what our interaction is going to be alive, right? It's a, You're going to yeah. be a part of me my whole life, right? Uh, yes, this is so. Uh, this is such an intimate conversation, Angel, that you are inspiring us to have with ourselves. Actually, the deepest conversations we we can have. We're coming to our close together, and I want to start almost back where we began. And there is an invitation for you to soften here. You started when I asked you the question of sharing some of your wounds or challenges. You immediately introduced yourself by naming your parents innocence mm -hmm. and jean-pierre and how much you loved them and so my final question to you before we leave this space together is to share with us a little more about them this festival is called the inspiration festival because we seek to inspire others and I would like you to share how your parents have inspired you. And we will feel that passion inside you and it will inspire us. Does that feel like something you could do in a few minutes? I don't know if I can do anything in a few minutes, but I'll try this <laughs> one. <laughs> um. You know, it's like, um, I don't know, 2 a.m. in France or something like that right now. So they're sleeping in bed. So I'm just, I was imagining them just like sleeping. <laughs> Drink, uh, you know, very often when we pray for our parents and see there's a time difference, we say, oh, I hope you're having good dreams. I hope you're having good dreams. <laughs> um, you know, my parents loved me, I guess, with like many people, probably on the, on the call, with their, in their own way, right? Doesn't mean perfect, but I know they love me. You know? And obviously if I'm here, you know, someone took care of me, right? Someone wiped my ass, fed me, you know, somehow gave me some kind of education. So my parents have been always dedicated to my well-being. And like every parents, you know, they fuck me up along the way, right? Like, <laughs> Because they have their stuff and right, they, they're going to snap like I snap and you know, they, you know, so there is unresolved stuff there, but I don't know if it's because they are aging now. Um, but I just very recently, I went, I went to visit them and my, my father had a heart accident in, in February and we were quite afraid and you know we almost lost him but he, he's good now but he made me realize oh wow you know you're gonna be gone one day right and there was these moments with them when i was you know back home where i didn't care anymore about the wounds and what they didn't do right and what they should change and what they should say sorry for and there was just love like there's really this moment of unconditional love where, yeah, we're arrived. Like, there's nothing else to fix. Like, stop fixating on that and that your mother should be that way. And 
you know, son and mother, there was all that stuff. And mothers are not always easy, right? Uh, no, I just saw her and just could love her with her pain, with an unresolved anger, with, with all the stuff that she's going to carry. And because she doesn't do breathwork or any kind of feeling, and she said she thinks all of that is useless. But I could love her like she is, right? And I guess they taught me that. So that's what I want to say about them. That somehow they were able to raise a grown-up man that is, was able one day to reach that kind of conclusion that they taught me by not always maybe showing it or telling it to me, but they really taught me unconditional love because I think that's the way they love me ultimately. Even if they maybe didn't show up that way, right? But that's mm. what they did. If, if I can experience it somehow, they trans they give that to me, right? It's in the, my DNA. It's there, right? So gratitude. You know, in 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 Indian cosmology, we always say if you don't know what to pray, if you if you forgot your prayer, if you have no idea what to say, just say thank you. Just thank you. That's it. Thank you. Well, <laughs> They that's say it's a, the most powerful yeah. prayer, right? So that's the one. Prayer. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, mom. Thank you, dad, right? Thank you, Ben. Thank you, people here. Yeah, thank you, right? Yeah. And this feels a really good space to actually bring this conversation to close. Uh, and then I know that we will have many more of these conversations, but this expression of gratitude, you know, mm -hmm. simply put from me to you and simply put from all of the people in this room, to you now for coming and sharing with us but the gratitude goes beyond this because i can feel all the people that you touch that you will be that you will be holding in that space of healing and not healing as we go forward in this let's just all finish right here right now with a breath maybe even a prayer of gratitude Thank you, Anjo. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Thank brother. you for our first session, everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm.